Wow, am I on live Zoom? <laughs> it's like magic. I tell you. Give me a minute. Get everything done right here. Oh yeah, I am live. Let me turn make sure I have the volume turned off of this darn thing. Hold on just a second. I gotta make sure the volume's See, I can hear myself talking, so I got to stop. <laughs> hey, hey, crew. People who made it to PsyCon and people who didn't make it to PsyCon. Oh, my gosh. What a blast. What an absolute blast. I just got home. I don't know if you can hear the cat going, where's my food? He doesn't care that I'm home. I've already given you food and I've scratched you and hugged you. I think he's worried because I guess I left my chair in a place where he can sleep. He's been sleeping on this chair, just judging from where the hair is on the chair. I cleaned it all off and he's probably a little upset that I'm sitting in his chair. Hold on. I'm talking to people. Hamilton. I don't know. He's trying to tell me something. Maybe, maybe there shouldn't be a raccoon in this house because I have, I've had somebody checking on my house and I've got cameras all over the house and there's been no raccoon in here. Anyway, so <laughs> I was driving home from the airport and I thought of this really interesting, funny story about Mark Edward. And I don't think I've told it to more than maybe 20 people. So I, I, I got to share this story with you. But before I do that, I want to make sure you all understand how much fun it is to attend these conferences, especially PsyCon these large conferences. And we are not having a PsychCon 2025. Um, we're going to try to do small little skeptic skeptic camps uh, around the United States, maybe Canada, and hopefully around the world if, if that will happen. And I saw a lot of enthusiasm for this from people at PsychCon. I, I know we can do it. I'm going to upload, well, in 2026, it's going to be a huge party in Buffalo, New York. I think it's May. I don't have it handy right now in Buffalo and it's going to be the Psycon and it's going to be in Buffalo this time because of it's the 50th anniversary of Psycon or I mean of, of um, CSI and we'll know about 2027 we'll should know probably around 2025 because it takes at least two years to plan these things anyway oh my gosh you guys I want to make sure I thank uh, Rob Palmer who just helped me pull off an amazing Sunday papers um, uh, presentation along with our six speakers who were just knocked it out of the park kind of people. And I heard so many wonderful comments about that yesterday. I haven't even, deep, um, I haven't looked at the photos. I haven't looked at the videos. I haven't done anything with that. I've, I mean, I literally got off the airplane, went to the grocery store, got some milk and strawberries and came home, you know, played with the cats a little bit. I have my clothes in the washing machine. I'm going to turn them on after this. And then I'm going to start on the videos and photos that I've taken because I really haven't looked at much of anything. But uh, Rob was just wonderful to work with because he is a uh, an engineer and he's very particular and he's very specific and things don't have to have a graph and a, and a schedule and everything. And I'm not necessarily quite like that, not that formal. But we worked really well together because the things I might have lacked in, um, he was able to make up for. And so I, I, you guys are going to love these Sunday papers. And the talks that I saw were great at PsyCon. And, um, you know, I just had so many amazing, wonderful people I met that I've never met before. And it was, it was phenomenal. Um, I do want to give a huge shout out to Carl with a K. I um, meant to give him a huge shout out on the um, Sunday papers. I had it like rehearsed on my mind and I got up on stage and then somebody interrupted me and you will, and you'll find out who that was and just threw everything off of my head. So thanks a lot. You know who you are and everybody there. <laughs> it's all right. I still love you, but um, yeah, I just want to, give a huge shout out to to all the people who did the amazing things there were so many of you but carl with a k was there as a volunteer as a photographer and let me tell you that's hard work 
Uh, we've had other photographers in the past, but this year it was solely Carl with a K and he was everywhere. And the, he would go back to his hotel room and upload photos on uh, just to make sure we have some awesome photos. And it made me, I was able to relax a lot because I didn't have to be like running around worrying about photos. So that was tremendous. And I, and, uh, I want you guys to know that was great. Also, Wendy and Heather. Oh my gosh. They had this idea. Hey. Oh, my cats are fighting. Hey, you two. <laughs> what can I throw at them? Knock it off, Hamilton. Leave her alone. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's like having children. Hey. I can't, I can't even believe. Wendy and Wendy got these dingle ball things. And we wore. She had a whole bunch and she was handing them out. We wore them all over the place and they were hilarious. Uh, you could see us all sitting in the, in the rows, um, in the, in the venue, you know, and you could just see these people's little dingle balls going like this and they weren't distracting. I mean, as far as people behind them, I don't think so. And you, and you could see the, the lights hitting them. It was so funny. And they were to prepare us for a space sci-fi theme part party on Friday. And we just wore them all the time. It was always sci-fi space theme. And I wore these things to the airport. I loved them. These are great. I think I might wear them around everywhere. And they're they're just great. So their idea, their promotion of that was hilarious. It was so much fun. It made the whole conference even extra special. And and then Carolyn came up with the idea along with, um, I guess Adrian had been at the mini golf with a couple of friends and Carolyn said she'd really like to have us all go to mini golf. And so we went to mini golf and that was a blast. And when I say we, everybody was invited. Everybody who was around could go. I, I don't do cult, um, cults. I don't do clicks. And so if you're around, you, you're invited. So that's kind of how it was. And um, that was fun. So I'm going to upload a lot of photos of that, but okay. Let's see if I can tell you this story without crying, but it was, gosh, you guys, it was, it was so Mark. And I'm thinking about it as I'm flying back and driving home by myself. And <laughs> he was just such a unique magician and he was not anything like anybody you've ever seen. If you got to watch his show, you were, you were in for a treat because his me mentalism in his performance wasn't like uh, a stage magician you would see who's super practiced and music's playing and and um, everything's timed just right and he knows what to say at every spot or anything like that. It was it was never like that <laughs> or almost never. He could he could do a performance. He could do a long performance with just a few items in his and uh, a few items in his pocket. It was hilarious, but. So when Mark would perform at the Magic Castle, he would do three shows a night, seven days a week. And I went to every show. And not only because I did the pre-show and so that it made the, it even more unique is we hot read people and then I'll, that'll have to be another story. But another day. <laughs> there was this one time we we're at the castle a few years ago. And I guess he was just starting to get back into doing the castle again. And he made a purchase. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. And he brought it and he put it in the back. So he's doing his performance. He was with Greg Otto, who is a, ma a magician at the castle. He's a comedy magician. He's just hilarious. And so <laughs> he put this object in the back of the little room where they have for the performers. And he said it there and he says, he told me he's done this before, but it was the first time I had ever seen it. So all through the night, you know, he's doing his performance with Greg Otto and it gets towards the end of the night. And there's this guy in the front row who is drunk. I mean, just drunk. And <laughs> he's got this beer that's probably like this much, this much at least in the, in the beer, in the, in the glass. And I'm not much of a drinker. So I guess that's a lot. Maybe not whenever you're already drunk. I don't know. I don't know. So he, he's sitting there in the front row. And Mark, he wants to make it difficult because he, he he's just a creative kind of mentalist. It, like I say, you can mess with him in, in ways. And he just, 
he, I think he looked, he liked it when it was more difficult and he was trying to make it more difficult to do mentalism. And that's why each show is very different from the last because yeah, he had the same routine, but if he wanted to skip something, he would skip something and put something else in if he wanted to. And yes, he was very precise. I mean, he had to have things just so, but um, the words he used would change at times and in the regular routine, but the pre-show and stuff that went on was always totally unique to each show. So the guy's there and Mark says, who wants to come up on stage? I need somebody to do this thing. And so the guy goes, I I'll do it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, don't pick that man. He's going to puke all over this. He's just going to throw up or he's going to, he's going to fall down or it, it's not going to go well. I mean, he was like a shirt, like you have to keep a jacket and a tie on all times it's at, um, at the Magic Castle, but they're kind of like skewed a little bit. And the guy's like, I'll do it, I'll do it. So Mark goes, you're going to do this? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And Mark says, you can only come on stage if you're, if you're, if you down the rest of your beer right now. <laughs> we're going, no, don't do it. And the guy gets up there, he's all chug, 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 chug. And he downs it, hands the glass to his friend. And we're like, we, I'm sitting in the audience going, oh man, what are you going to do? So the guy gets up there and he manages to hold it together. I don't know how, and I can't remember which part of the act it was, but the guy does it and, you know, he, he does whatever he's going to do. And then, and the guy's getting ready to sit down and Mark says, wait. I have something for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, this is so Mark. He says, I have something for you. You get the award. You win <laughs> the award. Okay, so really I win an award? Yeah, really I win an award? He's like, yes, you win the award. You win the prize. You carry this with you everywhere for the rest of the night because everyone will know that you are the winner. <laughs> so Mark goes into the back and he goes into the little, you know, the little area where they have stuff and he brings out a cantaloupe. It's like this big. <laughs> and he hands it to the guy and he says, you're the winner. <laughs> and he hands him the cantaloupe. And the guy's all, hey, everybody turns in. I won the cantaloupe. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he was so proud. And <laughs> <laughs> so and he, I guess he went about the day, the rest of the well, the rest of the evening, however much time it was, holding a cantaloupe. I guess he wouldn't have been able to hold a any more alcohol because he was holding this giant, I mean, full-size cantaloupe about like, you know, so big, a pound or whatever they weigh. <laughs> anyway, that was Mark. Boy, it was something. He really would have had a great time at Cyclone. And yeah, I know I'm going to cry. That's just the way it is. And, um, Good, happy memories of him. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who came up to me and said, thank you. I'm sorry. And people I knew, people I didn't know, people who knew Mark, people who didn't know Mark, people who had written, uh, read the obituary I'd written and um, latest Skeptical Inquirer. I hope you've got your issue. Make sure you subscribe. On page eight is the obituary I wrote. And this is in other places, not just in Skeptical Inquirer, but several people read it that hadn't hadn't known. And um, I'm totally open to having conversations with people. I had conversations with people I didn't know who had questions about um, prostate cancer because they or loved ones or whatever have are experiencing it. And I was happy to answer questions. I had lots of people ask me questions about 
you know, death and, and um, being there at death and um, getting rid of things and preserving legacies. I mean, I had all kinds of conversations. Fine. I love it. It's fine. Cried through them, but it was great. Don't be afraid. Death is a part of life. <laughs> My two cats are looking at me. They're <laughs> like, what's mom doing? I can't hear him. I don't know if you can hear him because the Zoom um, blocks that kind of stuff. So it's super fun. Um, you know, preserve these memories that you have of the people that in your life. Record it. Save it. Make it available for other people to share and remember. Um, and there doesn't have to be a special time that you preserve these memories in, in a special way and wearing special, you know, get your hair done just right and your makeup done just right. I just came off the plane. I mean, I just took my hair out of a ponytail and that's about as much as I did. Just do it, you know. And telling somebody you're sorry about their um, loss isn't, um, shouldn't be hard to just say, I'm sorry, even if it's a text or an email. That's all it has to be to mark all what was really important to him is his legacy. <laughs> My cat's crying in a moment. Is his legacy to be remembered and the respect of his peers. And that's the people in our community, the skeptic community, people all over. And most importantly, the magic and the mentalism community it was very important to him. I don't think he'll be forgotten. And I think there's an awful lot of us out there who, um, you all, who um, have amazing stories, amazing history. And uh, I, hope, I hope you preserve other people's and somebody preserves yours. Brian Cox at uh, Cyclone said, you know, people put up these statues and, and so on. And who cares? It's kind of funny. He said, it's a laugh. It's all going to be gone. It's all going to be vaporized. But, you know, it's going to take a while. So, um, you know, I hope we I hope we uh, remember each other. Take lots of photos. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to hang up right now. I'm going to go find out what was wrong with my cats. Um, and then I'm going to uh, start uploading photos. And I'm going to try to get these videos done uh, that I have of the Sunday papers. And you better watch them because they're freaking awesome. These people work so hard on them. And I really want to make sure everybody um, looks at them. And one of the things I, lastly, one of the things I heard, like I said, I, I, I'm not really got back to normal <laughs> for me. One of the things I heard about the Sunday papers over and over, it was how uh, how much they really enjoyed the presentations our six speakers did. And um, somebody told me, they said, you could have taken any one of those speakers today and you could have put them right in the middle of Cycon and nobody would have known any different because the quality was so good. Now, my the speakers that Rob and I, um, you know, our speakers were only 15 minutes, um, but they're new, most of them, and they're, they're uh, it's it's like a, these are people who are just kind of doing it for the first time. And it's pretty terrifying. Uh, Rob and I've been through it. And so we know. And we tried to do everything we possibly could to make it awesome for them. And let me tell you, see if I did a great job helping us out. I asked for things and I got them. And uh, they were just happy to be asked. And uh, Cody was amazing. Oh my gosh, she was just incredible. The aud it works for CFI as far as audio and all that kind of stuff. They just treated our people great. All right, everybody. Next stop, I'm going to upload photos and videos after I go see what's wrong with my cats. Take care. I miss everybody. I'm so glad to be home and um, get thee to something someday, you guys. I'm telling you, it's so much fun. Bye for now.